Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Yeg Pivots. I'm your host, Ingrid Schiffer, and I'm very excited. Uh, today, we have some great guests lined up for you. Very excited to uh, interview them and uh, keep the momentum going on what has been to date a great show. Um, we have uh, wonderful guests that are sharing their stories of what this year has looked like for them, different organizations, business owners, uh, charities, not-for-profits, entrepreneurs, um, because really we're all in this together. So uh, on that note, I'm excited to welcome my first guest or our first guest uh, on the show today. We have Sherry Somerville with Valley Edmonton. And Sherry, thank you so much for joining us. We'll give you a second there to, uh, to join. Hello, Sherry. Can you hear me? Hi. Wonderful. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Excellent. Thank you so much for being able to join us. Yeah. Um, very excited. And so for those um, that don't know, Sherry Somerville has actually been uh, a pillar in the Edmonton community, especially on the art scene. Um, those in certain circles, those who know, know. Uh, Sherry's been a, a, quite the contributor to the community over the years. And so it's very um, exciting that you're in this role with Ballet Edmonton, considering your background. For those that aren't familiar with your many accolades, perhaps you can give us a little bit of a background on how you um, came to get involved. I'm going to actually take these off because it is very bright in here. So go ahead, Sherry, tell us um, how you got involved with uh, Ballet Edmonton, and then we'll go into more about what um, initiatives you guys are working on and kind of what things you have on the go. Right. Uh, I uh, have had a, a career since I was a young young person, 17, I think I started my first paid gig. So as an actor, uh, singer, dancer, um, in that order, or singer, actor, dancer, in that order. And um, I also opened a business about 10 years ago, because my son was becoming a sommelier. And so I got some business experience by opening a wine bar on 124th Street, to facilitate him, uh, his career. And uh, it was during that time that I also was volunteering for the Nina Haggerty and met the chair of Ballet Edmonton. And then when they uh, were looking for a new executive director, uh, she asked me if I would consider that opportunity because I had the arts background and a business background and understood dance. And I thought it would be a fantastic, uh, fantastic thing to do. Well, that's awesome. And so now, you know, how timely that you have all this experience because I feel like regardless of what industry or background, um, you know, when we have guests on the show, we can all agree that this year has been unique <laughs> and challenging in uh, many different ways. So um, tell me a little bit about what, what the um, beginning of the year looked like and then some of the, um, you know, pivots that you had to enact uh, in Valley Edmonton to continue. Yeah, we, uh, you know, we heard that trouble was coming in in January. And by March, obviously, it was clear that we we're going to have to suspend rehearsals because we were worried uh, by the nature of ballet and we were have such high contact experiences that somebody would get it and pass it to the company. So we suspended operations and, and uh, continued to pay our dancers, um, because we didn't even know CERB was coming, and just told them to isolate and stay safe. So everybody went home for two weeks. And um, then other things rolled out. Out. And we basically ended the season, tried to wrap up. We had to cancel our third show, which we were in the process of rehearsing, um, stop a choreographer from coming from Montreal, all of that chaos. And then we went right into, you know, survey mode. There was just conversations all over the country and in fact, all over the world with other ballet companies and arts organizations about what's happening and what's this going to mean. And uh, so once we knew our dancers were taken care of, it was just about listening for a little while and trying to get a read on the, the situation. And then over the summer, uh, we had lots of time to, to, to plan. And so we, we um, you know, we planned for how, how are we going to raise money? We had lost literally 100% of our summer fundraisers. So that's several hundred thousand dollars worth of money out the door. And that's money to operate in the fall. Um, so that was frightening. So there were more layoffs of, of a small admin staff and um, just cutting costs wherever we could. And basically it was just me left and um, uh, and uh, trying to plan for a new season, which we have done. So we are 
we, when you dial it right down to what's important for Valley Edmonton, hiring the dancers is important for Valley Edmonton. So we realized the priority had to be using our money to bring the dancers back in the fall. Valley mm -hmm. dancers aren't ballet dancers if they can't keep dancing and they need specific facilities and ballet masters and all that to continue that constant work like an Olympic athlete. Mm -hmm. So they're all coming back. And we have our studio, which I'm sitting in now, and uh, we will continue to create in the fall and and uh, for for digital work. And then after Christmas, we'll do we'll attempt live shows. That's exciting, though. So we do have that to look forward to. There's a possibility yeah. that we can we can see a performance sooner rather than later. Yeah. Okay, you that's bet. wonderful. And, yeah. and that's just one side of things because I was as I was kind of looking uh, in preparation for our interview today, I noticed that um, just checking my notes here, you guys have uh, several community wellness programs. Are those still in effect? I, uh, there was some stuff. Um, you know, yeah, we have a great program called Art Connects where we, uh, for the last number of years, have been going to inner city schools and organizations that serve vulnerable people and giving them free ballet classes. We, we realized if you want diversity in ballet, you've got to find the people who are away from it for a reason. Either it's, it's expensive or they don't feel welcomed or it doesn't feel inclusive enough. So we had a very big um, Indigenous and immigrant take up in those programs. Mm -hmm. And um, um, it was a ton of fun. And uh, so we, ha we have not, uh, been able to initiate them this fall because most of those kids are still struggling with getting back to school. But we are doing a survey right now with all of our stakeholders in those programs to see if they want us to do them online. And if so, we'll deliver them online. We also had a program for seniors with cognitive challenges, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, um, dementia. Um, and we want to see if we can also get those people learning online. If there, there's a way to facilitate them where they are with big screens, we can run those classes. Oh, that's so heartwarming, especially yeah. in these times where they, you know, the seniors, they're, they're part of that vulnerable population. So it's yeah. so heartwarming to hear that something is kind of designed for them. And uh, I was I was reading about some of those benefits of um, the movement and and kind of you know reinstigating their agility and just it kind of invigorates them. So well, know. in synaptic connections, when you move your body to rhythm in to to music, it creates a whole other synaptic kind of awakening. So we've uh, wow. research on that is that dance is awesome for for seniors with dementia awesome. and awesome. And so, okay, for everyone watching, where would they find updates on, like, do you want them to go to your website? Yes, go to our website. Yeah. I am just writing all the updates. I was alerted yesterday that things are very dated on our website. And it's like, oh, right, because there's only me. So I uh, I have to write all the updates and they, they will be. We do have a, people should sign up. Uh, for our Valley Edmonton newsletter um, called mm -hmm. Studio Notes. And then, you know, uh, once a month I send uh, updates out to anybody who's, who's um, it doesn't cost you anything to sign up. Uh, so um, valleyedmonton.ca mm -hmm. is our website. And then on that, you can click to sign up. Okay, wonderful. Um, so everyone go sign up for those, uh, the newsletter Studio Notes, and that way you can um, stay up to date on when these offerings are going to commence and obviously the big announcement that I think everyone will be waiting for is when we can catch some performances yeah. um, and and for those who haven't had a chance to Valley Edmonton just tremendous it's not uh, it's not what you're expecting it's just ever so entertaining and I very much look forward to to you guys being able to perform um, now, we still have some time, Sherry. So like, what else uh, would you like um, our viewers to know about? Um, I, I noticed here that uh, you guys have um, eight dancers. So, and with a choreographer, when, when we wang, is that, mm -hmm. I got that from your website and I know you yep. mentioned you're the only one yep. So is that still current? Oh, absolutely. Wen Wei Wong is one of Canada's most preeminent artistic directors, and I was really lucky uh, to persuade him to work here. Uh, so he divides his time between here and Vancouver, um, and uh, he has a home here as well, and he is really amazing, and he has taken us definitely to the next level. So we are officially one of Canada's uh, ballet companies now, um, and Wen 
Thailand has an international reputation. So we we turn we had to not do our tour to Asia this year. Um, we have some other tours coming up that hopefully won't be canceled. Um, and we have eight dancers and we have dancers from all over the world. We, of course, from all over Canada, Saskatchewan and BC and Alberta and Mexico and Brazil and Japan. And so it's a really wonderful, diverse group of people, all of them who live here now full time. So they are also Edmontonians, but they bring all of that, that wonderful, diverse experience and, and cultural awareness to our company and enrich each other. And we're a core group. So, you know, uh, an ensemble of eight who work together all year. This is what they do for a living. Uh, we're not a tutu and tiara kind of ballet company, but they all have that same amazing uh, background in dance and training. And they're just stunning athletes. So if you think you don't know or don't like ballet, you should come and see us. Yes, I think <laughs> one that doesn't like ballet hasn't actually gone to the ballet. That's, That's right. right. I would That's say right. That's a statement. So yeah. and before we, we move on to our next guest, Sherry, Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, Ballet Edmonton is a registered not-for-profit. So yes. um, there's those shoes for the dancers, um, all that toe stepping, and that's a lot of, the, uh, those are expensive shoes. Yeah. Uh, for those watching, if you're wondering where to put your charitable donations that you can yeah. um, consider Ballet Edmonton, because I, I believe you guys are accepting donations. And just for some of the community outreach that you guys are doing on such a an interesting approach in involving dance and kind of like you were you were sharing there, Sherry. Um, I think it's important that everyone knows that that a, a big port, part of your work is is uh, kind of driven by those those donations. So absolutely, it is. You know, about seventy five percent of our operating revenue comes from from fundraisers and donations, and we can offer you tax receipts. And uh, we have some raffles that we use to raise money. You could buy a raffle ticket. We also have a new donation program uh, in line with Skip the Depot. So if you let us come, if you sign up with our little referral link um, that you can request by emailing me, Sherry, at balletedmonton.ca. And that's S-H-E-R-I. Yes, Sherry, at balletedmonton.ca. I'll give you a referral link, and they will come and pick up your recyclables from your home off your deck or your wherever at free at no cost but they'll give us the proceeds so we're I talking you know five or ten dollars most people have but if we get enough uh you know enough people signing up that's significant for us that buys Absolutely. a lot of point shoes at 125 dollars a pair yeah no doubt so it's all of those little things right that's, all that's those a great idea so just you know as people are collecting your your empties why wait um just you know get in touch yeah. with Gary. and then my last lot it's just so much to talk about i know <laughs> such little time um there was the last thing i saw where did i put it it was the little vegetable box Oh, Coolman's. Yes, we have an amazing thing with Coolman's. Again, go on to our website yeah. and it is for $30, you can order a, an amazing veggie bag from Coolman's that is packed with fresh produce. And Coolman's gives us a portion of every bag that we sell. That's wonderful. So, so in one fell swoop, you can support local, you can yep. eat healthy yep. and also support a charity. Yes. So it's kind of like a win-win. Yes, it is. That's awesome. And yeah. so right off your website as well, Sherry. They yeah, can go bet. there. Yeah. And, okay. I just wanted to make sure we touched on that because I thought that was quite an innovative um, offering for something that people are going and spending anyway. Anyway, yeah. Now, right? Like there's there's a lot of challenges in, in attending markets now with um, yeah. certain restrictions in place. So this is a convenient way to get your vegetables, um, get them fresh and uh, and support um, all around, we're supporting the Edmonton community. So um, thank you again, Sherry, so much for joining us. And um, we, I, I'll be signing up for the studio notes and I hope others will as well. And Thanks. look forward to seeing um, what whatever your dancers are working on now, I'm sure will um, commence into a, a, a beautiful culmination of, of dance uh, and art. Um, uh -huh. So I'm very much excited to hear when you guys um, are ready to, to do a performance virtual or otherwise. And so um, thank you again. And for those that are just joining or missed it, balletedmonton.ca. Yeah. We'll have all kinds of stuff coming out online. And in the new year, we'll be partnering with the Art Gallery, the Skirts of Fire Festival, and Brian oh, Webb. Okay. 
Yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank you again, Sherry. If you're able to join us, I know that um, we're, the timing is a little tight today for everyone, but uh, we will be doing that group photo at the end. But just in case we don't, if you could just like close with me for a second here. Okay. Okay, just in case we didn't have a, a <laughs> uh, but I so appreciate it and it was great to connect with you. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and welcome our next guest. So uh, we have, I'm going to just, uh, uh, yeah, okay. Okay, bye, Thanks. Sherry. Thanks. Uh, I always cut them off, I'm so sorry. Okay, our next guest, I'm very excited to welcome. Um, well, I'm always excited to welcome all guests, but Patrick Binns, um, while he's loading, I'll get through um, some of the highlights with Patrick. So Patrick is a, I'm just, I'm doing your big intro here, Patrick, give me a second. So Patrick is a certified management consultant. He's also a solution architect, wealth of knowledge in informatics and manufacturing sectors, um, involved in process redesign, transition, integration of information technology, um, he facilitated the development of business strategies, organization structures, business processes, software design and development, and loves applying all of this extensive knowledge into ensuring that companies can develop new capabilities within their organization. <gasps> wow, Patrick. Oh my goodness. My <laughs> That's <a> goodness. Mouthful. <laughs> you, sir, are a wealth of knowledge, and I'm super excited to have you on the show, as I am with every guest, to be fair. But um, just a very, a very interesting um Kind of background that you have and and what an interesting time to have that background so um yes. maybe you can tell me a little bit about how you got into um kind of that management consultant role and then we'll we'll kind of migrate into how that's you know maybe been uh affecting your work with clients this year and what kind of challenges they're seeing but sure ahead. i'll give you a little bit of background i'm an engineer don't hold that against me uh, I'm also an entrepreneur. I started started my first business as a tech as as a technician writing computer software for the health industry. Oh wow! Uh, back in 1988, uh, and we ran that business successfully for 10 years. And then my partner and I we sort of had a different direction, and, and we we left. And uh, he bought me out, and I went and did an MBA and learned what it what it means what it means to run a business as opposed to run it, writing software for other people. Uh, and one of the big challenges we had uh, in that at that time was finding a good advisor for business problems. Uh, and today, even uh, we, a lot of entrepreneurs struggle to find good business advice. You can talk to your accountant, you can talk to your bank, but both of those groups tend to focus very much on the financial aspect of your business as opposed to your operational perspective or your strategy. Uh, we focus on on companies which are ramping up, not startups. I mean, if you're a startup, go talk to Tech Edmonton or, or Nabi or or Startup Edmonton. There's a there's a number of groups uh, associated with startups. But we focus with those on those uh, those companies that are running their business, not necessarily a technology business, mm -hmm. and they're struggling. They've stalled uh, or they don't know how to react to a pandemic like COVID. Uh, or, you know, I was, I was looking at a, a document uh, earlier this morning, uh, dated May 2009, oh, wow. talking about managing in a recession, because that's when asset back commercial paper failed. Mm -hmm. And a lot of companies, uh, particularly in real estate here in Alberta, were suffered, the price of oil fell. And we're now dealing with working and running a business. In, a, in an economy that has uh, a lot of exposure to oil and gas and, and very limited resource type companies or resource industries. Mm -hmm. So my, my area of passion is how we work with mid-sized organizations within Alberta as a solution to diversifying Alberta's economy. And that diversification word has been on the mark, has been bantied around for many years. Yes. 40 plus years uh, and the, the question is how do we do that uh, and how does government uh, and various industry associations support uh, what we have really is a, a fledgling manufacturing sector if you compare ourselves to southeast asia mm -hmm. right yeah uh, yeah and and so how do we get better at 
at doing what we're doing and how do we have more confidence? Well, if you look at the, that, that middle tier or that, that mid-sized company, what are the barriers? Typically it's management skills. We have a lot of technical entrepreneurs who don't have business training. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly where I was when I ran my first company. And that's what put me into management consulting. Went through project management. I, I worked with IBM. There's, a, there's an interesting company to work with. Uh, in terms of how they operate and deal with uh, bigger companies and saw all of the challenges that big corporates uh, companies were experiencing. And it's the same thing. It's, it's, it's technical ownership, it's, it's, it's management ownership, it's productivity, it's how to introduce change in the organization. How do you set up uh, your strategy? What is your business and what's your value proposition? And many, many businesses don't have that clearly understood. And so am I correct in understanding that this is where you would come in and help them, uh, like guide them through this thought process and yeah. help them kind of unearth what, what exactly their, their um, value offering is, their differentiators? Is, is that kind of one of the key components to your work? Yeah, typically with, with, a, with a client, uh, we'll have a, it's a complimentary assessment. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll ask a, a number of questions. We have a methodology that addresses eight areas of your business. Uh, and part of that methodology also defines what we call the business management system, which is how do you manage those eight areas of, of your business? And how you manage this depends on the size of your business and, and where you are with the respects to revenue, profitability. Uh, you know, one of the key questions, are you sales constrained or operationally constrained? Uh, so typically the entrepreneur, the, the business manager will come forward with, well, this is what's, this is what we're struggling with right now. Mm -hmm. And we'll, we'll, through that assessment, take them through um, and to, uh, and work to identify what the root causes might be. I mean, sales are down. So is the root cause the fact that it's COVID going on right now, or is the root cause is that you have to adapt to the new realities of a post COVID environment? Are you still trying to sell the same product mm -hmm. that nobody wants to buy right now? And do you need to shift? And what we're seeing now is a marketplace where those business entrepreneurs who are aware are taking advantage of the change. And those are the companies which will be successful. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, there's no doubt that there are companies which are struggling seriously uh, right now, but there are other companies uh, partition manufacturers are running off you know working two shifts because they are basically manufacturing personal protective equipment right and so where do you reposition your company uh, to take advantage of the new uh, of the new reality mm -hmm. and so so many questions i, I gotta get some answers out of you like so for the viewers that are you're watching you gotta give them some tidbits here Patrick. sure um, what, what would be, uh, you know, the, the first things that you would recommend a small business owner examine, um, kind of once they've identified whether an issue is operational or sales, um, then what, like, and at what point do they call you? Um, are there certain steps that they should be taking, uh, to kind of do that self-assessment first? Yeah. So, so when they call me, they call me when they, they're, they're unsure, they're uncomfort, you know, they're not confident. Uh, what a management consultant can do through the conversations is, is help you build your confidence and help you recognize from an external perspective what you're good at and what you need to work on. Right. Uh, so, you know, it's a second advisor and it, it's bringing forward the experience of a lot of other companies that can be brought into your organization. You know, often you hear about outsourcing. Well, consulting is actually bringing information into your organization. And so our focus is on shaping people's attitudes mm -hmm. uh, towards their business and understanding and establishing mechanisms to control their business, uh, to delegate work. Delegation is a big problem in a lot of small companies. I don't know how to delegate. Mm -hmm. But in, to answer your first question, you know, how do you respond to a post-COVID and, and what should you be doing? The first and foremost thing is to be visible. Right. If your company is not visible, then you're not going to get sales. 
And I'm going to just for you know uh, the benefit of viewers that maybe aren't picking up what you're throwing down. Can you specifically tell us the best way in this day and age for a company to be visible? It's advertising. You know, nobody sure. wants to spend it. Would you say print or digital, or do you have a, a recommended mix? Uh, <laughs> there's, there's, there's a, there's a, an interesting question. I could take a, a lot of time on that one. I, I do not suggest you do only traditional or only digital advertising. You advertise what's best for your organization using channels which are appropriate for your audience that reach the, or, the orbits of your audience. Mm -hmm. uh, I could go into a lot more details around that if people have questions on, on, on that. Uh, that's an area where we, we participate uh, specifically in, in is reach. So uh, to, just to continue on, be visible is, most, is, is really important. But the other thing that's really important at this time is to be creative. Mm okay, so be visible, be creative. Yeah, so if you're visible, but you're still slogging the same old, same old, mm -hmm. Uh, and your value proposition hasn't changed, then you're not going to be successful. You spent a whole lot of money on your channels and you haven't converted because you're, you have, haven't been creative to the changes of, of what people are looking for. Mm -hmm. I so, think that's very fair statements. Yeah. Yeah. So, so let's be creative in terms of before you spend your money is understand what is the new value proposition and how are you going to repackage your products in the new market? Uh, you might consider uh, uh, pricing and discounting. You might consider credit uh, requirements because if you're selling to a market that has no money, mm -hmm. uh, you, you might need to extend credit to, to your customers. That's, that's a factor. But you're now being creative. Look at leasing as opposed to outright selling. Um, so, Very uh, good advice. Now, I have another question for you, Patrick, because throughout our conversation, you've been referring to um, kind of that post-COVID, um, you know, world. And, and uh, do you see that happening soon um, from a business standpoint? When, when can business owners really know that we've entered post-COVID? Are we waiting for like a certain, you know, like a, a, a fixed announcement that we are now in the post-COVID world? Because there is, you know, kind of a, a large majority of people that are saying this is, you know, here to stay. And this is our, our new permanent reality and that there may not be a post COVID, in which case it kind of leads to um, some of the businesses and, and those business mindsets that you were mentioning, uh, you know, being critically at risk of, of disappearing. So yeah. what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, big question, lots of thoughts on that. Uh, um, uh, you're right, there is gonna be no announcement we're in post COVID economy. Mm -hmm. I think the COVID uh, pandemic is similar to the 9-11 uh, impact on air travel in that we still today uh, are experiencing the impacts of 9-11 almost 20 years ago uh, from a perspective of impact to airport security and, and how we travel. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be the same today, uh, in, except that COVID has impacted uh, not just air travel, but public health. And that's perhaps one of the good things around COVID is that we really haven't had a major uh, public health issue in the last 70 years. We had a bit of a scare with SARS in 2004. Mm -hmm. And I was in Toronto at that particular time at a health conference and somebody coughed and it was amazing how fast 50 people can move away from that person who coughed in this health conference. Um, but we have this new attention to public health and that's gonna be beneficial for, for us as a society uh, in terms of we now understand how we work amongst each other as from a social level as opposed to an economic level. Mm -hmm. so, uh, that's one, one question you asked is, you know, is there an end of post COVID? Uh, no, I think there is gonna be an end to the government subsidies. And, you know, if you take a look at the three, $343 billion of money that the Canadian government has subsidized our economy over the last six months, that represents the same deficit of 29 years of our, of our economy. That's a huge, huge number. And so this aid, which is moving on, is not going to be sustainable. And that's when it's really going to hit us in the next three or six months. So we can't get our economy restarted 
it's going to be much more challenging because we're going to see the end of the current level of aid because it's just becoming unaffordable. And now we're getting into a situation that the British had in, in post-World War II where fundamentally the country was bankrupt, right? And so not being a naysayer, but I'm that's like, Patrick, how do I, I need to pivot this. <laughs> we need to finish on a positive note, man. Like, <laughs> so, so, so on the positive side is, you know the you know our, our economy is going through a shift as a function of yes. post covid and, and what i mean by post covid is this now we're living with covid uh, and how is our economy going to shift right? we're living with 9 11 right so uh, you're going to see industries that are going to be challenged the entertainment industry and sports uh, and any any industry that typically involves a large gathering of people are, are going to be significantly impacted mm -hmm. but at the same time uh, public health services, uh, localization of our in, of our industry, globalization is declining now, not just because of COVID, but because of the sanctions being put in by the Americans and specifically Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're now seeing more localization of your economy. So if you're a business out there and you're, you're not paying attention to the local market, it's time to start paying attention to that local market. Okay, and, so I, that was buying. a key takeaway, folks. Yeah. Now is the time to start paying attention to your local market, yeah. in addition to being creative and being visible. Yeah. I also feel, Patrick, that I'm going to reach out after the show is over because I'm like, woof, this guy's just a wealth of knowledge. I could just pick your brain all day. Um, and I still have so many other things I want to ask you, but we're running out of time. So yeah. give me one second here. Um, okay, we talked on that. Uh, there was some mention on focusing on product development when sales are down. Um, shifting your marketing fo focus to segments that are responding well in the post-COVID economy. Um, what kind of, maybe you can leave us with uh, a couple more sage, sage advice, a couple more points, pointers oh. for our, our business owners um, in the community. Uh, and, and, and also like, at what point do we call you, Patrick? When do business owners go, I need to get a BNC group in here to help me identify, you know, where I should be focusing because I mean, you know, as, as much as I'm like, yeah, let's leave it on a positive note. The fact is we are in a very critical time when you're talking about uh, significant changes to our economy on, on grand scales happening in the next three to six months. I mean, maybe as, um, you know, business owners are looking at the books going, we're okay, but there's, there's definitely um, consideration that needs to be given to the fact that uh, customers might not have, as you mentioned, the funds to start, you know, to continue purchasing products and services. And so what does that look like? And, and how can you help? Yeah. You can. <laughs> so so conf confidence is key. Again, I cited my, my first company where we were two technicians from, from engineering and computer science, and we had no business experience. And we were very unsure of what we should do. So if you're in that, if you're in that space, you're unsure, that's where you should talk to a management consultant about your business. Uh, you can go talk to the bank, but that's going to be around finances, but not what your business needs to be done. So that's that's a key thing. Uh, you you can contact us whenever you're uncertain, or whether you or the other one is when you're too busy to deal with something. And a lot of entrepreneurs they're stalled because they can't delegate, mm -hmm. and they need to figure out how to put in a better management system so that they can grow. Uh, so those are those are the two situations: uncertainty or growth pains. Okay. You've stalled. Um, on my way out uh, for, the, for the for today, I think that the 21st century uh, business management style in the post-COVID working remotely is management by objectives, as opposed to managing the clock by timesheets, is managing the performance of your, your team by what they've accomplished and setting expectations uh, jointly. Uh, setting those objectives and measuring the achievement of those objectives is, is one key thing. Uh, and the other is to be creative. Uh, you know, this is a time of change and you, you've, as part of that creativity, you need to look at the risk scenarios that may impact your business because the, the economy is going through flux of change. Mm -hmm. You have to manage the risks, the positive risks and the negative risks that they're going to affect you and be ready for that. And that's part of that creativity point. Wow. Patrick, I can't thank you enough for joining us. Um, I just feel like, uh, you know, been, been shamelessly picking your brain. And so thank you. And I reserve the right to haul you back onto our show to, to get even more um, insights. 
I, I want everyone watching to make sure that you make a note that's a Vinci or, and sorry, did, uh, where would you like our viewers to go and get more information on where to connect with you, Patrick? Uh, visiting our website is probably the starting point. It's abinci.ca is our website, okay. A-B-I-N-S-I. -I. Uh, we're, uh, we're just located on the northwest side of downtown on 107th Avenue. Wonderful. Uh, In the north edge. On the north uh, edge, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you again, Patrick. Uh, sincerely appreciate your time and, um, and, and generous uh, sharing of, of your insightful knowledge. Um, I'm going to go ahead and welcome our next guest. If you're able yeah. to stick around for a little bit of a group photo at the end of the show, that would be much appreciated. Sure, I'll okay. continue listening in. And, and if anybody wants to give me a shout again, we are by appointment. So Wonderful. Uh, we're quite welcome to listen well, to your story. We are so happy to have had you on the show. So thank you again, Patrick. Yeah, we're thanks, Ingrid. Into the uh, waiting room here and welcome Vincent, our next guest, um, who's actually returning. And while he's connecting, I'm going to just quickly check and see if we have any comments from viewers. Uh, we like to be a very um, involved and engaging show. So if you're watching us on Facebook, be sure to, um, to leave some comments or any questions for the guests. That's certainly um, welcome and appreciated. So uh, Vincent is, you know, some of you may remember uh, Vincent from Food Search Inc. He's been with us before. Vincent, how are you? Hey, how are you? Good, so good to have you back. You're, yeah, it's, it's been a while. You're regular now. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Vincent's one of our um, one of our few returning guests. We're super excited to have you. Um, and so Vincent, your, your main focus is Food Search Inc., but today you're here to tell us a little bit more about an initiative that is, is running from September 11th to the 25th called Yag Takeout. Oh, yes. Um, yeah. So I guess a background of myself first. Yeah, is, no, uh, for sure. <laughs> so Food Search Inc., we started in January. Um, so we're a software company with the original goal of um, how do you connect food to the people that have like preferences like allergies, like gluten allergies or gluten intolerance or like uh, dairy or all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And we've so that was in January. And in March, we pivoted to something else because of coronavirus. Uh, which is a giant directory of food for takeout delivery. And the past few months since March and through the summer, it's just been a crazy time just because our client base is um, the restaurant industry, which has been totally right. disrupted, right? A lot of people can't dine in and then uh, restaurants are trying to figure out what to do during this time. Mm -hmm. so some things we uh, experimented with was like a digital marketing, social media, and we've learned a lot through the past. And this actually goes to uh, what Patrick was saying. Like the key point right now in order to reach people is just to be visible, right? Right. If not on places where there's an audience, then you're pretty much, you can't be found, right? So if you're a company or a business that's really not like doing social media or even like just advertising, like saying, oh, doing a few posts on your Facebook, whatnot, then no one can even find you. And then the people that are posting on there, they'll, they're the ones that we found instead. So uh, that was the past few months. We've had a few uh, uh, businesses uh, test out uh, like social media and we've been experiencing like Facebook ads and all that stuff. Okay. Um, and yeah, so that leads us to the project we're working on that you mentioned for uh, Yeg Takeouts, which is uh, we've been working with Sammy, one of your, uh, one of your best. <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, yeah, and um, it's an event that's focused on the restaurants in the area, the North Edge. So. But right now we're onboarding a few restaurants and just showcasing those cuisines and dishes that they have, especially in the area. Because in the area, um, throughout Edmonton, I think it's a very unique type of dishes, um, especially with the, the Black Lake community and um, especially with stuff that's going on. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, and then a lot of people or a lot of businesses in the, in the North Edge aren't really that tech savvy. Um, so they're not really visible. And so we planned the event with the gig ambassadors as well and North Edge um, to do this event, the digital event to showcase these restaurants through social media, through Facebook, through Instagram, and um, just let everyone know, let whole, the whole Edmonton know like what dishes they have and um, all the good stuff that they, that they provide. And I think just being visible, especially like what Patrick said earlier and just extending the reach 
is super valuable during this time and just to help out the restaurants uh, in the area. So I think um, this event holding with a certain area like the North Edge is uh, so everyone just come down and visit and we're actually holding a scavenger hunt as well in the works. So that's being planned currently. So that'll be a fun experience, something that um, I think it would be super interesting. See yeah, I, I'm, I'm super interested in the scavenger hunt. Um, just and, and that's going to be involving QR codes and just yeah. kind of that's great. Um, I think one thing everyone can agree on is that the focus is really on supporting local because we're all everyone's, you know, in this together. Um, but we want to see our community thrive. And so that's why it's so wonderful to hear that you're putting together this initiative because it's not just, um, you know, the food community, not just the Edmonton food community, but in particular, we have like such a, an interesting um, demographic in the North Edge and, and these little gems that haven't been discovered. And so that's awesome. Uh, this, this yay takeout, hopefully we'll, we'll be able to um, draw more, more attention and visibility to those to those, um, as you mentioned, maybe not so tech savvy restaurant tours or restaurants. Yeah, absolutely. I took like a walk around North Edge too, and there's so many like hidden gems as well. So I think it'll be a good, good, uh, good event for people to come down and visit. There's a lot of murals, which is amazing. And then oh, uh, yeah. I walk through a few, and just, just it's, a, it's actually such a nice area if you take a stroll. I went like two weeks ago, so it was like nice and hot out. Nice. <laughs> right now where it's cooling down and um yeah no but it is i think it's definitely a a, a gem of a neighborhood like uh, people don't realize how many little um hidden businesses and and restaurants that that are kind of tucked away here and and accessible through walking i mean one thing i noticed is like 100 107th Ave actually already has a wider sidewalk compared to a lot of streets so you know we're kind of um ahead of the of the curve in that regard i hesitant to use the word curve <laughs> think about flattening it so anyway we'll yeah. just leave that so okay give us the lowdown um on yag takeout uh so step one is they're they're visiting yagtakeout.com and that's where they're going to complete the sign up form um for the restaurants we're signing up right now it's in progress okay. but um once the event is started we're actually working with a few uh, social media influencers so Awesome. They'll be uh, providing giveaways and then the scavenger hunt is happening as well to actually um, browse through all the restaurants that are in the city and I'll be creating clues. So then based off that information, so that'll be a fun experience. And so the event is like, you have to go down there and you'll scan, you can start at any restaurant. You'll okay. be able to scan the QR code and you'll get a clue to the next location. And using the website, you can actually figure out like the information uh, all on there. It's like, oh, is it by this little uh, mural? Is it by this little street? Or uh, what type of cuisine it is? I'm trying to make it uh, fun, but I love that. It out and saying, oh, it's this location. Let's head there for the next clue. And there's a prize at the end for first, second, and third place. So that'll be uh, interesting. And uh, hopefully it'll run for a good two weeks. Perfect. And the timing is great. I mean, the weather should still be good around then. Um, although you never know, it is 2020. I feel yeah. like a tornado or, or I shouldn't say that. Aliens? Like, aliens? aliens? Aliens is likely. Um, and then, okay. So, but the cool part though is um, just another layer and this is completely unscripted, but just for those who are planning on attending and, and participating, um, just a little fun fact. There are a ton of pokey stops in the North Edge. I'll just leave that there. Oh. <laughs> By every mural. Yeah. Not that I know anything about that, but mm -hmm. <clears throat> if someone's into Pokemon, I'm just going to leave that there. Pokey stops and takeout and scavenger hunt and food it sounds like a great time. Are there prizes to be won, Vincent? Um, yep, we'll be giving out uh, gift cards for the people that are uh, participating. And there's participating cards, giveaways, and also for actually winning the scavenger hunt. So that's all. Please. Oh, very cool. Yeah, I awesome. love that. Yeah. Okay. And other than that, how are things going with Food Search Inc? Are, are you near every restaurant being on your on your directory or should um, you do no, another we call out? What's the what's past two? There? Oh, sorry. The past two months we've been uh, developing uh, like a takeout system. So you can actually, we've been working with one restaurant to test out the software. Um, so say Food Search Inc before was just a directory, but now we're focusing on being able to order and just do it for takeout or even uh, dine in and order ahead of time. 
and as well. So say you can order something like two weeks in advance and the business will get it instantly. And we're, we do it, we, we, we do it for, for through email for now. So say you put in an order, it goes through email instead of de uh, developing a full app or like putting apps in uh, restaurants. Mm -hmm. um, it's just through email and mobile. So that'll be a lower barrier to entry. Uh, but yeah, we're testing some bugs in the way, but hopefully we can keep uh, going ahead with that um, because we know like a lot of uh, delivery um, third-party apps and stuff, there's, huge, like, there's issues coming up with that now. So I think being able to like provide takeout and we built the website so that you actually search by particular dishes, right? So say if you're savoring something or you're uh, like craving something, like I want something sweet and salty, type in sweet and salty, then you'll have something pop up, which you really can't do in um, Google or like the it's third party. Yeah. Right? And then say like you're typing in like uh, the flavors you want and then your allergies that you have then you can actually find specific dishes like, um, oh, marinated beef and all that stuff, like poke bowls and mm -hmm. all that stuff. So it's, it's a work in progress, um, but it, it's been difficult because like working with restaurants, especially during this time has been difficult. So there's that, um, but yeah, eventually we hope that it will turn into something good. Um, yeah, so yeah, that's a startup life for you. <laughs> I'll just trial and error and testing. That's exciting though. And, and mm -hmm. I just love how you're getting the community involved. So, um, Again, I'm just going to mention yagtakeout.com um, is where we're, we're getting people to get all the information. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. Yes. Perfect. And that's, that's kicking off in what, seven, eight days here. So don't wait. Um, get, get all your information lined up and start planning to participate because mm -hmm. it's going to be a lot of fun and it's supporting local restaurants. So I think that's, that's a huge um, mm -hmm. motivator for everyone to participate. So yeah yeah no. we're slowly uh sorry we're just slowly no, no. adding uh restaurants on there um so there's like only a few on there now but uh by the time i think next week we should, we should. oh yeah yeah crunch time vincent yes i know time. crunch time we're all working and it's 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 a different world now we you know it's all it's all good um mm -hmm. okay well i'm is there anything else you want to mention before i welcome back uh patrick and we'll do like a little uh group photo um no that's pretty much it um just yeah chaos is uh gonna be super fun yes i'm excited and so okay last question um sorry i keep saying that on social media where can we like i'm guessing people can tweet and participate um while they're on the scavenger hunt they can be like tweeting their involvement is that through uh, north edge uh or is there another uh twitter account that they should be um, connecting with Instagram, you know, mm -hmm. uh, kind of sharing their adventures. Um, well, okay. The idea right now is uh, we'll probably make a hashtag. So okay. Perfect. Hashtag that. Um, but because the partnership is with, uh, the event is organized by North Edge Ambassadors and us, Research Inc., um, we'll totally, any of us can be uh, tagged on there. So awesome. yeah, it's, a, it's actually such an awesome partnership because like being able to work with you guys as well, it's been super fun. Yes. And, yeah, so it's a it's a, it's a, it's an amazing partnership which just developed in the last two months, which is crazy, right? Hey, you think I can about, relate to that. <laughs> yeah, you think about the long term to like create events like this, like say, in person events like the festivals and castles that were created. Those, those are take like a year in planning, which is very difficult yeah. to do, right? So yeah, going digital actually. One thing that this year has kind of brought out the best in everyone, it's, it's in just doing less, less, uh, we don't have that luxury of time. It's, there's been a lot of pivots and all of a sudden things have to go from in-person to virtual or um, just, you know, mobilize quickly. And so I would say that's a bit of a, a theme there um, is, is there isn't so much um, focus on the planning because you don't want to miss the opportunity of doing, right? Mm -hmm. I would say not. I think, not that don't I think the planning, that. the planning would be a bit easier too because it is digital. So right. there's that. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot less uh, details to facilitate. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, let's bring Patrick in, and we'll all shoot the breeze, the proverbial breeze, um, for a few minutes here. Patrick, are you going to be participating in this scavenger hunt? Uh, probably not. <laughs> Hang a sec. No, um, we were just talking. Were you able to hear our conversation with Vincent? Yeah, I did. Uh, okay. I, I was listening in on other things. Um, 
I, I, I caught part of it, but uh, not all of it. Uh, I have very limited time, uh, to be honest. Yeah. Absolutely. You guys got to eat, though. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. You know, I just came back from vacation and uh, had dinner at the Balkans in Banff. And that's the first time I've, I've sat in a restaurant uh, since March. Yes, I'm yeah, sure so, many people have have. So, uh, so, ta so takeout is 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 big, but I I just I don't do a lot of takeout. So I'm in that group that's consuming a lot of groceries now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But good idea. Yes, and yeah, well, I, I think we were chatting about how it's going to be an excellent way to get the restaurants in the area that perhaps aren't as um, participatory mm -hmm. I can run with that one. sure we'll do it uh, on online and so this will help with their visibility yeah yeah one of the things which uh, we're we're just launching so I, I write software uh, as well uh, Vincent uh, and it's called antics uh, and uh, we're in alpha right now uh, it's a uh, web advertising platform uh, that does the digital display and uh, web integration. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, it's quite interesting. We're competing with indoor uh, display boards against Patterson and, and other groups. Oh, yes. But our, but our market is what we call local area networking. And, and this is. Yeah. Land party. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, we're going deep nerd now. Let's yeah. go. Let's go, yeah. Patrick. I'll, I'll get out of the get out of the nerdiness now. No, I like it. Let's but, do it. But but what it is is it's an advertising platform which might fit. Uh, it, it's designed again, coming back to the local, you know, local uh, economy, is getting a group of of people and and companies to advertise in the same channel. So you don't have to establish your, your own channel. You don't have to go on to Google, which can get lost on Google. Very easy to get mm -hmm. lost on Google. Uh, and now you can advertise and get your, uh, get your messages on the orbits that are in your local market. So very good for local businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the concept is you can put a display board up in your premise uh, and you can sell uh, uh, business card ads to the, the people who are your sponsors. This works great for uh, sports clubs, not for profits, uh, the North Edge. Uh, you, can, cool. you, can, you can set it up and, and the host basically defines things uh, and then basically sells the space on, 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 the, on the board. Mm -hmm. uh, That's so awesome. It's like a macro intranet, like your own little network of, of advertisers but you're not people it's, are advertisers it, and the advertisee it's designed for what, what we call ecosystems okay so uh, a, a group of companies in the local geography can constitute an, an ecosystem mm -hmm. and you want to promote within your friends and family that those members that you trust within your ecosystem and so it's a swap Think of it as a swap. I'm advertising in your space, you're advertising in my space. Together, one and one equals three. We say it together, it'll be heard, our voice will be heard. Mm -hmm. uh, so. I got everything except the one plus one equals three. <laughs> <laughs> That's advanced engineering mathematics. Yeah, that like advanced nerd talk. <laughs> like you can tell, you can tell. I just, that one went over my head. I'm like, okay, I'm lost now. Mm -hmm. um, but that so, is exciting. And so so that's just an alpha right now. When When can we expect to see something tangible so uh, we're, we're launching that through um, a number of our existing companies that are clients um, and, and relationships uh, and then we'll be selling that out um, we're doing a, a, a free uh, promotion to the first hundred companies that basically get three months free uh, okay. uh, and uh, we're, we're looking at uh, organizations like technology Alberta uh, and other groups, universities, to actually create uh, space uh, where the where the ads will be shown. So we're we're hitting up the um, the industry associations um, mm. to actually create the the back the backbone for for the exposure. Uh, so so the answer is uh, pretty much uh, in the next two or three weeks. Okay, uh, it'll be it'll be open uh, by appointment. So. Patrick, oh. we should actually totally chat because um, I follow the markets a lot and what uh -huh. you said about like the business uh, ecosystem and the landscape right now, it's super change, changes super fast. 
Yes. Um, so yeah, it'll be super interesting. Yeah, uh, my my comment earlier is that globalization and the big player is going to be is going to struggle with with post COVID uh, s- supply chains and, uh, and and transportation is 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 is, is challenging. Uh, I think there's a, a big uh, pro to the the small local companies that can diversify and compete on quality and diversity as opposed to uh, economy and consistency. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So anyways, wow. my two cents. Yeah. Love, love yeah. To, to touch base with you, Vincent. Absolutely. Uh, and if there's things that we could do to promote you, what you guys are doing and vice versa, that's, that's what ecosystems is about. And that's where I think the North edge has got a, a big opportunity to, to help with uh, our, our, you know, our local economy. So it's we're in so, this together. <laughs> yes. Thank you. I'm, and we're going to leave it on that note. I love that. So um, thank you guys for joining us today for this episode of the Pivots. Um, and for those of you watching, please remember, we're always looking for new guests. So please get in touch and find out how you can support the show and or participate. Um, guys, thank you so much for your time today. And I'm going to go ahead and um, mess it up. So you have a great week and uh, everyone uh, stay safe, but be happy. Great. Okay. Thanks, you Thank, too. thanks, Ingrid. Right. Have a great day, everybody. You oh, wait, let's do our group shot. Just everyone smile. Vincent, you're not smiling. Come on. There we go. Okay, awesome. Thanks, guys. All right, bye. Care, bye. <laughs>